Okay, Carrie. That is some hair. I need a big girl hair today. You need big girl hair. Mm-hmm. I need big girl hair. I need a lot of things, but yeah, let's take it. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a lot of things these days. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Who are we? Who are we? I'm going to ask that question this time. Sandra, who Carrie. are we? <laughs> we are the screaming in the divorce in the woods. I love you. You're a dork, but that's why I love you. I'm a total dork. You know that though. And people out there that don't know it, I'm a total dork. I don't know. I love you. I think you're awesome. It's awesome. Okay. You're awesome. Sir. Mm-hmm. And Who did we interview today? Karen Slack. Kiki. Karen Slack. Kiki Conversations. Kiki Conversations. Infamous I- opera singer. Opera singer who started her own live conversations with friends, colleagues um, over COVID. Same time, same kind of thing we did, same time. Um, it's, I really love what has happened with her and her life and her career and her story. Just super, super inspiring and super cool. And I'm so glad that she said that she would come on and do the shenanigans. Shenanigans. And she is an excellent interviewer for those of you who have not checked them out please check out kiki conversations on youtube and it's also a live show she has interviewed some amazing people and she is so talented at it she does it live unlike us cowards (laughs) say it like it is yes i am i'm a total wimp i'm not doing live anything no nope nope and she does it and she does well so you know props to her Woo! but check out this clip because we had definite shenanigans going on. We had a good time. It was fun. We I did. really like her. I want her to be in the B BFF um, category. Is she an honorary screaming diva? I kind of, I really think so. I think that she doesn't know this yet, but I think she needs to be like a recurring guest. She's a kindred spirit. Yep. I love yep. that. Kindred spirit. Oh, we oh. heart you. Here we go. So check out the clip. And... Okay, I know I'm pulling out the big guns today. I'm sorry. Karen Slack is a big gun. She needs big guns. I apologize, Karen. I know what's coming. <laughs> the hills are alive. The sound of cowbells. Subscribe. <laughs> yes, we have completely lost our minds. Yep. Yep. But that's because we need you to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. I don't want people to think of of this time um, as people just complaining and people, right. you know, uh, um, uh, yeah, it can always be this idea, but I think I, I think the respect for the injustices that have happened yes, and yes. the sacrifice that many of us have made during this time, you know, I think it needs to really, it really needs to not go unnoticed. And it's fine to say best of 2020 lists and you make all these lists and you make, you know, and all of us who are create. I think that shout out to all of the content creators <laughs> that this was not your full-time job, that this Thank is not something you. that you, shout out to you and you guys and Angel and um, Larry. Larry. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Kenny Overton who yeah. created, you know, all of us, you know, and, um, you know, TDO, you know, Dallas opera and all of the things all a shout them. out to all of the yeah. artists who, t- who stepped into the moment. Right. And what, for whatever reasons you decided to do it, that's your business, but shout out because this is not easy, no. you know, no. shout out to everybody who took that courage, who, who took that leap of faith and courage and put their ass on the line for this art form to move us through and forward. Yeah. I think that there needs to be some kind of award <laughs> or something to those of us who put our asses on the line, our careers and all these things. Shout out to all the black artists who were called Thank you. To step up and speak yeah. and speak yeah. and speak and speak again, you know, like, you know, there, there, there needs to be acknowledgement for that of some sort in this industry, because we did a service. Absolutely. You know, and so I just wanted to just say that, you know, that it's not just about complaining and talking about all these things. Like there are, these are real issues. 
Yep. Hello. Hi. How are you, Karen? I'm good. How are you? Oh, well, you know, drinking early in the day. <laughs> I need to go get mine. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of loving the whole off the shoulder thing. I'm like, well, damn, I need yeah, to wait. put a sexy top on. Here. Carrie, we gotta do, we gotta do, ooh. She's got hot mama lips on her. <laughs> oh, I, I do. <laughs> I, I wore this for you guys. Um, oh, I love it, and I'm coming over to your house to steal that, just FYI. Uh -uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming first. Karen, you are looking gorgeous with the makeup, the ear, no. the hair, the shirt. I'm a little jealous right now. It's, and I, I'm messing with the halo lights because it's a hot dang mess up in here today. <laughs> No, this is all for Screaming Divas. I'm so happy to be here. Like, happy I was like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you just have a birthday too? No, I didn't. My birthday is September 22nd, but I was just feeling very much like, um, I, I had just done a, a Zoom and I was like, oh, I am too cute to let this moment pass. Give them 45, baby. And that's why I did that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I was like, damn, she's looking good. I'm, I'm totally stealing that because there are moments where we are having some really good days looking on the Zoom and I'm stealing that idea. That's brilliant, Karen. Thank you. Carrie, today <laughs> is not that day for me. Y'all look good too. Come on, cut it out. Um, I'm sorry. I just, my dog just had like a cow, my, my brand new fur baby, and I have like slobber on my shirt. So we're doing great today. <laughs> and I had toothpaste just for you, Karen. Toothpaste. She might've looked it off. I'm saying. I, I might've licked it off. <laughs> you okay. know we have to take these moments okay absolutely all right we can be serious here because we have some serious things that we need to yes. talk to you about yes how you doing um you know honestly i'm exhausted really i'm exhausted um i'm thankful i'm grateful i am um still in shock from all of the things uh, but I am exhausted. It's been a uh, heavy nine months, you know? Truth, you know, I was just gonna ask you, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it, exhausted? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, and mostly, um, mostly grateful, of course, but just mentally exhausted, and and that kind of hit me the last couple of weeks when I started my my BAMF Center um, yeah. position, right. and to take on eighteen artists' dreams and you know um, their stories and and to take it on and try to help everybody that you can. I think that was like my max of what I have been sort of doing for the last nine months and, and just not really just forging ahead. Like I always do, like my, my entire career has been push, right. push through. And I think that, you know, so I'm sort of used to doing that, but I think the culmination of this last, the last few months of just the impact of like meeting with 17 singers or composers and directors for, um, two weeks straight it really exhausted me and I was doing, I'm doing a project with Minnesota opera. And, um, so basically we did a reading of the, of the script for the project we're doing. And it was my words that I had written down and I just broke down all the way down to the ground, like crying wow. and reading my words. And when I started speaking my story with all the things that I had been carrying with me, it was, it had just gotten to be too much. And even Ryan Taylor called my agent and was like, um, are you checking on Karen? Like, are you help helping her with all of the things that are yeah. going on? Like, are, are you sure she's okay? You know? So I think we're all just hitting breaking point, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really. And I'm, um, and I'm thankful, I'm, I'm thankful for the holiday. I'm thankful for the end of the year, but I think we're all just, you know, listen, we're, we're opera singers. We're not, you know, we're equipped to deal with the emotion, of course, because that's our job is to tell stories, right? But when it's you and your whole entire community and the whole world, 
and all of these things that you're weighing heavy, it's it's a whole other experience. So yeah. it, it is. I you know what? As I as I'm hearing you, and there's so much I want to ask you and talk to you about. I Both of us, yeah. We you know we I think our journeys online, our mine and Sandra's and yours, really kind of started around the same time. It was really interesting to read why you did it because it's very similar to why I wanted to do it based on a podcast idea that my husband and I had come up with. I wanted it. I wanted to call it talk diva to me. Um, you know, like a play on talk dirty to me. Cause I really was just tired of the bullshit. I really wanted to hear some real stories, you know, from singers. Um, so I found that really interesting that you had had that same idea, you know, two years prior or something to, to all this going down. But what I, what I love and what you and I talked privately about one time, the words you said were, was, what a blessing it has been because doors have opened for me that might not have opened before. Um, what I loved was that what you started opened doors, not only for you, but for so many other people. And, um, which I'd love to talk to you about. If you want to talk about all those doors that you've walked through, yeah, exhausting oh, as it's been, <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. When was your first episode? Let's talk all about that. Oh, of, of combos. A key, key. Kiki conversations. Kiki conversations. Well, you know, um, Janae was my first episode. And I had, like I said, I, I was on a gig maybe like a year, year and a half ago, almost two years ago. And I I always am talking to my, um, whoever I'm on a, a gig with, I love talking to my colleagues. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love vibing with people and people think that I don't like to hang out because I don't do a lot of hanging out with people. I am very much like a one-on-one -on -one or like two people kind of, I'm not the whole cast kind of, kind of chicks, you know? And so, um, yeah, yeah. too much. It's, it's too exhausting for me, you know, it is and you know, all the person. It depends on the group of people. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> True, you know what? And I'm a play. I am the one that's mostly quiet when I do the big groups, unless okay. people ask me. You know, and oftentimes, you know, being the only black, okay, you know, that's a whole other thing we can talk about too. You know, right, so right. there's always you know issues too. But anyway, anyway, so I um I reached out to Janae. I texted her, texted Russ, and um uh maybe one other person. It's like, listen, I have this idea. I'm going to do this thing. Um you know, will you come on the show? And everyone was like, absolutely, absolutely. And then I was pining for two weeks about who should I ask first out of my crew? Because I was like, if I ask this person, this person's going to get mad. Get and, offended, yeah. <laughs> and if I ask this person, that other person's going to be like, well, why didn't I go first? And so Janae's pretty neutral in our group. Everyone loves her, you yeah. know, she's a baby. So I said, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to call Janae and, um, and I, you know, she was like, absolutely. And we just did the thing that we do, you know, over a glass of wine and just talking about, about life. And, you know, at the time, at the first episode, she was kind of going, going through something or whatever, and it just didn't show at all. We were just kind of vibing. And so it was a hit. And then Robin, Blan uh, Robin Burgess, Terrence Blanchard's wife called me on the phone and said, we're going next. And I said, Okay. okay that's huge I, yeah i mean and, and you know terrence and, and, and robin and i are like family but i just thought well maybe later on down the line when i'm a little bit more seasoned i'll call my heavy hitters you right. know and people just started like calling me emailing me dming me like we want you know we want to come on might, yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys have the same response you know certain times it's like it, it and it's that's kind of how it all it all went off and started. when was this so when are we talking time wise uh probably march march mm -hmm. april it kind of feels like it was like last year but okay, it was but, pretty much but you were brave enough to go live where sandra i said no way not doing live like i say too many crazy ass shit crazy like just right now crazy ass shit damn whatever and i'm like that cannot be on the internet my mother will kill me <laughs> like yet we do it all the time now <laughs> um, jamie we are not pg rated no jamie barton's went off the rail and my mama watched that and my mom was like you guys were so funny <laughs> your mama watched that? oh no. we talked about sex toys karen 
Okay. Yes. Listen, I keep telling my dad, like, you can watch on YouTube. They're all there on YouTube, but you know, he'll scroll and it'll come up. My, you know, thing will come up. So, yes. which I'm really glad you did that because I was missing them, especially because we were in the midst of what we were going through and then family and the whole stuff. And I couldn't get caught up on everybody. You know, it was like so many people just started doing live. I couldn't catch up to what everyone was doing. Yeah. So I was so happy that you eventually put your your conversations on YouTube so that, you know, when I can't sleep in the middle of the night, which honestly, most of us are having issues, have had issues this whole time with doing that I can, you know, that's my comfort zone is to go here. You know, I feel like my people, my, my people that know, understand my craziness and wackiness as a performer, I can watch that and feel like I'm in the room and I can, yeah, that I'm not alone, I guess, which is kind of why someone I wanted to do this too. So people didn't feel that way out there. I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. So of all the people that you've interviewed, who has been the craziest or the best interview? And is there anything you won't talk about? Is, are there like off, off the shelf mm -hmm. topics? There's nothing that I won't talk about. I always ask people like, what is it that you don't want to talk about? And pretty much everyone is like, you know, I'll talk yeah. about anything. F Paul was the only one that was like this, 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 you know, and I just, <laughs> you know, but even him, you know, I, we never met and he was just, we were just vibing. It was so crazy. But my, my fave, well, I'll say my favorite, cause I'm going to get in trouble. Okay. But, we won't um, call it favorite, but the one that sticks in your memory the most. Ricky Ian Gordon. Mm -hmm. Really? He started reading poetry and playing music and it, it 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 just became a whole other a whole other it wasn't even an interview interview or a conversation he was sharing with us he was gifting us cool, and cool. i just got out of the way and let him do i said baby this is your this is your this is you you know like here you go um ricky mark markham cool. and they were back to back i think right I, I, you know, I was, I was that, that, that whole week, I so needed that because there were so many other things going on, um, mm -hmm. at the time with, with various artists, uh, those of us, you know, who have been on this social justice and trying to figure out, you know, right. our place in this whole thing, it was a lot going on and just to have them, um, the, the composer panel that I hosted when Terrence, um, moderated Wow. phenomenal yeah phenomenal and composers i think are sort of my like my favorites yeah. i love having them speak because we don't we only get to hear their music their heart we only get to hear yeah. their soul through their music but to hear them speak about their passions and their dreams and their desires and how they vibe with each other yeah you know, russell russell in my conversation i think we did too russell we got thomas off. Yes, we did too. We got cut off and then he came back, you know, um, that was a favorite. Ken, Kenny Overton and I, because that was when um, George Floyd was yeah. murdered, I think right before yeah. that. And we were like, okay, are we going to do this or not? So what have yeah. you learned about yourself doing this? Or have you? I, uh, yes, I've learned a lot. I've learned that I have a skill set that I didn't even know was an actual skill. Was <laughs> listening to people and um and being able to make them feel safe yeah. didn't even didn't even know i had i mean I, I do that with my friends like not with complete strangers um i didn't know uh that i was so 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 curious about people you know, I guess yeah, as yeah. Art, as singers, we have to be because we have to get into the psyche. But mm -hmm. I love hearing people talk. Yeah. You know, and tell their story. story. Yeah, that's a that's a talent too, because conversation. I always I always say this to people: conversation is two ways. It's not just talking, but it's listening. Yes, and that's such an art and a, and and a talent, and you have to be able to just shut up and let somebody tell their story. So exactly. Prop it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I am a people person. I grew up as an only child. So wow. I spent so much time by myself and so much time with my with older people, you know, because my parents were er married eight years before I came along. And they had my mom had a hard time getting pregnant. And so when she had me, that was it. I closed the shop. 
<laughs> my husband know. says they stopped with perfection. There you go. My husband's That's what my granny would say. <laughs> yes. They exactly. created perfection with you, and then they said, no, thank you. That's it. No more. That's it. It was done. So, yeah. So I, um, I, but I, so I grew up with, with cousins. They grew up as my, like my siblings and my husband and I grew up together. We're childhood sweethearts. And so we grew up in the same neighborhood. Our parents grew up together. So, you know, and so like we go way back. And so all of my friends and my cousins grew up, I mean, are, are like my siblings, but um, I didn't have, I spent a lot of time by myself as a kid at home, but I didn't realize I was such a people person, but I was a social butterfly in elementary school, apparently. <laughs> um, Will you come play with me? Will yeah. you come play with me? <laughs> Talking all the time in class. So. Well, you're a communicator, and that's why you're an opera singer. You know. Okay. Let Let's talk about that. Carrie had a uh, had a lot of questions to ask about that. Well, yes. But first, I actually wanted to ask about. It, am I right in thinking that Kiki Conversations, because of this, opened the door for Portland Opera, opened the door for Banff? And then did you ever see yourself in these positions, let's say before COVID? And, okay. I'm sorry, no. no but yes, yes I did because I'm one of the co-chairs for Women's Opera Network at Opera America. That's right, that's right. And I, yeah, and I was one of the, uh, I was the first in their, one of their career blueprints like days that they, right. that they, you know, the, so I always wanted to be an administrator. I always okay. wanted to, be the thing that I didn't see in the business, you know, mm -hmm. um, particularly as a woman, <laughs> particularly yeah. as a woman of color, you know, I was like, hmm, this is interesting, the boys club, let's break that up. So uh, <laughs> I sort of, sorry, yeah, I sort of did see myself that way. And I think that the LA opera panel that a few of us were on, um, really? when I talk about having a seat at the table, I think sparked a lot of interest for people who didn't know that that's what I wanted to do. So, um, but conversations absolutely did open a door for Portland for sure. Because right. when Sue Dixon reached out to me, she said, I've been watching you and a lot of the things that you have been doing, uh, on online, she didn't, she, I didn't sing at Portland. I've never sung on their stage. So there would be no way that she would know who I was or my, my, my artistry or anything like that. So it was solely based on the conversations that I was having. Really, I was grateful for that conversation, grateful for what you said. It's why I wanted to reach out and talk to you um, because it just, so good. anyway, so I was so happy that these opportunities were coming down the pike for you because I thought I want that voice at a table. I want that voice at, and not just Portland or Banff or whatever. I mean, I'm really excited Everywhere. To hear where you end up, so. Yeah. So what's happening? What's, what's, what is going forward? Any new, fun, exciting things you can share with us? Well, you know, um, I don't know. I, I'm at a crossroads now where I would love to have a set, a different kind of career, uh, in this, uh, over on the other side of COVID. I love opera and it's my, it's my passion, but it's not my first passion. My first passion is chamber music, concert, recital, Ooh. big orchestral, you know, um, the, the, the community between the, the conductor and the orchestra and the, you know, and the soloist or other soloists in a way to me, it's very freeing. Um, uh, it's very, I get to wear what I want to wear. I get to sing, you know, the things where you see what doing the, what that you want to sing. I get to be me in my fullness and I don't have the constraints oftentimes of some director or casting director, you know, that, that tells me, well, I don't see her in this, or I don't, I don't hear her in this, or, you know, you know, all these things that come with opera and I'm kind of sort of experiencing that right now with a um, negotiation of a role that I'm trying to do and a music director is like, well, I just don't see her in that. And the general director and the artistic administrator is like, we want her. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this, excuse me. Like, I'm so tired of that conversation. Like I have been singing in this business for 20, almost 20 years. 
you know, and I don't feel like I've always been able to do and be in the places that my talent deserves for various number of reasons. You know, I, I understand how that works, but I'm just like, okay, this next time, are you going to go back to what it was like pre COVID or are you going to be, or is it going to be different for you? And these are the conversations that I have with myself, you know, um, when I'm thinking about, um, artists and casting them and, and, and you know, as, is a, a part of my job in Portland is helping with that, you know, and that was something that I really was like, no, I really want to see. I don't just want to be there. Yeah. Like, I really want to be a part of the conversations. You know, I'm thinking about all of those things and trying not to be that, the, you know, the thing that annoys me the most about, about the system. But what I do have is the, I, I know voices, I know repertoire, you know, I and I am curious for artists what they want to sing. I asked my friend, what do you want to do that someone's not allowed you to do? You know, what what do you have to say? Th does that even happen? Well, no, they put us all in boxes, yeah. you know? All the opera companies say, okay, Karen, you know, she, she sings this. Mm -hmm. Carrie sings this. Sandra sings this. And they never think outside of those boxes. And they never ask us what we want to do outside of these boxes, because I think we are multi-talented. I mean, look at John Holiday, for instance. Yes. Who knew? Who knew? That he can do anything and everything. Right. And I'm sure no one ever asked him, do you want to sing something outside of this box? So right. it's to you for taking the lead on that. And yeah, and I hope I, hope I am able to be effective you know and who's just you know who's to say you know may, maybe i land in a gigantic company maybe i maybe i create my own company you know maybe i stay you know in a in a company like portland and help them i don't know i don't know but i'm open to, to any anything that's supporting me and my vision you know um and i say that i'm i'm open to anything that supports me and yeah. my vision <laughs> you know and what i what i know we need in this industry and so um yeah i you know so i that's my goal is to is to be able to do the kind of art that i want to do and if that does not include opera it would be very very sad but if as long as i'm doing and i'm expressing i'm i'm, I'm creating you know it's very important to me to create now more opportunities more roles for uh, singers and black singers you know, to come after me. Cause you know, yes, I want to do these roles. And you know, my friend Eve Giliotti and, and Talise Trevine are both pushing me. They're like, you're a producer, you're a producer. So don't just think of yourself as present, uh, creating opportunities and presenting for you to sing things, but that produce them, Right. be the producer and not just the singer. And yeah. so I'm very thankful for my, my tribe of, of women who are like, um, <laughs> do all the things. So if you could project two years, five years, 10 years, what would that look like to you? Not only in our opera business, but in your life and your part of that in, in changing those narratives. Um, I want, I would love to be a media, a, a, a classical music, bringing classical music, bringing the, the vocal art form into the mainstream um, as, as much as we can, presenting it with uh, the fullness that we are and not just the stuffiness. So that means multimedia meanings, taking combos to the next level, um, creating a model and bringing other artists who want to do the thing um, or whatever that thing is, uh, <laughs> you know, um, also being some sort of producer in a way and still continuing to sing because I can do that still well i don't believe you have to drop one hat right. and put on another one like i don't i don't believe that because it's happening in other genres yeah you know and also for me always serving artists that's what combos was born out of it was a platform for mm -hmm. other people to come and speak mm -hmm. and so i want to continue to to do that you know do you see it online do you see opera continuing online i hope so not 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 as the sole way we <laughs> We digest it because there's nothing like being in a live theater and having that sound wash over you. Even as a, even as a, a singer, to stand next to somebody who oh, is yeah. like, right. oh my, I feel God. that vibration of another voice hitting you. I miss exactly. That. But do you yeah. think people are kind of fatigued from all this online stuff? Do you think they're just kind of done with watching online? They really want that person-to-person -person contact, 
or no? I or think no. I think they are, but I also think that they're still doing. They're still watching. You know. Yeah, yeah we are tired. We're tired if you work a full day and people go to the Met at eight o'clock at the end of their work day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, That's true. Yeah. I'd be sleeping. I'm telling you, if I had to work a full day and then go to the watch an opera, I'd be like, <sighs> um, I'd be we, we do see those people. And FYI, anybody that is an audience member, we can see you in the monitors if you sit behind yep. the conductor. I see you sleeping, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> Oh yeah, the well, thank you. And keep coming. Keep coming and falling asleep. Thank you. <laughs> hey, listen. These are just salaries, come. right? Oh, right. Just oh. come. Just come. Just just continue to come to the theater. But yeah, I mean they are I'm tired. You know, I don't know about you ladies, but even like midweek when I'm preparing for my show, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this I mean, is not your job and you're tired listen when i interviewed zach wolf last week i judged the met competition the districts from nine whatever ten o'clock straight through got off had some dinner and jumped back on like this was my full-time job judging a competition Christ. people don't know that it is exhausting because you have to be laser focused and then you have to write all these critiques down and then you get like, wait a second, which one was that? Yeah. Because they all kind of sing the same things, right? And you get a little confused. So, and it and it's hard, it's exhausting. But to do that plus get online and do the show and everything else along with all the other projects that are going on and other companies you're a part of, I mean like, yeah, no wonder like 2020 you're like- I'm, I'm still singing. And so yeah. You, exactly. You're singing a, a new opera at the Met next year. Are you part of this? Oh, I'm not doing that, unfortunately. Why? Oh, do we? Do no, because they, they didn't. They didn't want to take the original, They didn't want to take the original cast. So, but he wrote it for you. He wrote it for you. We're talking about fire shut up in my bones, mm -hmm. right? By Terrence Blanchard. From day one, <laughs> but you know, I'm 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 happy for my colleagues. That's the thing is that we're family. Yeah. You know that that cast is 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 family to me, just like my cast, my the cat we did it for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it still sucks. It still it still hurts my spirit because like I was involved with that piece from day one. Terrence heard me doing Champion, his other opera yeah. in, in San Francisco with Opera Parallel three years before two years before and he's like you know i'm writing this new opera and i think i think i want you to be billy who is um uh, charles's mom i think i have a role for you you'll be perfect for it and he had to convince st louis because they pretended like they didn't know who i was they're like well i wait a bit and i should i shouldn't dog them out but i'm not going yeah, to because yeah. i love, I love you know, it's it was a huge hit it was a oh huge yeah hit. Yeah. So, okay. But then this is my question and we've talked with other directors about this, where the line is and how much they have say over when somebody else wants their piece, you know, how much did, I mean, I, I'm just always curious just to know what the back conversations are of why X, Y, Z, you know, would have happened. I just, I don't know. I find that all really fascinating. Terrence, Terrence really fought for me and I know he did. And I know he, um, and I, and I know he, I think his heart is, is a little bit broken because, you know, he knows, I, I mean, I really put 150% into making sure that that piece was a hit, that that piece was successful from the first note. Almost something, you know, I stepped on a few toes and I was like, well, I don't think you should write that for this. And I don't think, you know, but I knew the voices that he was writing right, for. Right. You know, I knew Devon's voice and Julia's voice, you know, and when they weren't in the workshops. And so I, I tried to always be cognizant to say, well, I think that's not going to work. And this is, you know, or this is great. Or, you know, even before my own, even before my own, because I knew I had to advocate yeah. for other artists that are not in the room. And so um yeah so i really was intimate and like i said even when we were in you know you don't know how new works are gonna you don't know how they how they're gonna land and um and i really did i really did put my complete soul into that piece and so when it when it was when word on the street was that i was not gonna go with it it, it was devastating and it's gonna be devastating in the fall you know but i'm but again you know i'm 
it, my family is is taking this piece and taking it to the next level. And so I, you know, I'm happy for them, but it is, it's crushing. I haven't looked up who's singing it. I just, I actually, I just looked up the piece. I looked up you and I was just because I wanted to know more about it and him actually. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have his booty on here with the screaming. <laughs> <I just asked. laughs> but um, he's been on my list to contact, but I'm like, um, you don't know me, but do you want to come <laughs> some shenanigans with the screaming divas? Um, anyway, so who's singing it? Uh, Latanya Moore. Latanya. Oh, okay. Well, I can't be mad at her because I love her. <laughs> no, and it's not her. And you know, and we we hadn't talked about it or anything, but you know, it's it's fine. You know, they they should be supporting her. The Met should be should have long Whoa. before. Amazing no. singer as well. I mean, both of you. I kind of I kind of want to hate her right now because of all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, Tanya, I've always been a fan of hers and she knows this, you know, I remember right. when she was a, a singer at AVA, a student at AVA, and I don't know if I was at Curtis at the same time, I had just left and she was there. I, and I remember her Marguerite and Faust. I remember um, all of the things that she had done, you know, in school and, and in beyond. And I always knew she was an incredible, mm -hmm. beautiful singer, you know, and so, and I was also very proud singer. Of she I was yeah. cast your nanny to me when we were in Trieste, and I was like, "Girl, you should be first cast." <laughs> Beautiful, but that's her. That's her stuff. So. Well, let's let's talk a little little bit. But like, going back, mm -hmm. you sing all kinds of. You sing modern music. You sing operas that are written for you. You sing Tosca. Right. What do you think technique differently when you sing these two things? The different types of music. Do you sing them the same way? Talk to us about that. Well, first of all, I have to say my voice is built for Strauss. That is the composer that is the best for me and always has been and it always will be. Mm -hmm. I'm a soaring line, six measure type of girl. You know, Mozart was always really wonderful for me as a young singer. But again, because I don't look like Arabella, I never have and never will. They not gonna let me sing her, yes, you know. Um, and ro I would love to sing the Marshallin and all of these roles, yes. you know, all of these things. So for me, you know, I have had to adjust my particular gifts to what I've been allowed to sing. You know, um, I love Aida, but I don't. But she's not my friend. You know, I love interpreting her. Yeah, it, it's a long night. It's a long, hard high. <laughs> <laughs> night for me I didn't, right, right. You know. and all they care about is that one note that's it one, that's it want. that one note peace out exactly yeah. right they're like oh well she's not there you know and I can sing the one soaring up in the duet but when I get to possibly me and my brain is like I see I see. Yeah, I see. Exactly. Exactly. Freaked oh, out. Freaked out. But but wait. I mean, I've never sung this. But what scares me about that role are conductors that decide to, in the middle of that aria, like, oh, let's just slow it down a little bit too. So it's where it's almost like a dirge, and you're like, is that soprano gonna make it? Is she gonna make it? Is she? I don't want to be thinking that while I'm listening to it. You know, it's a hot mess, people. Hot mess. Exactly. And even the phrase going up to it the first time when you don't get to the C, it's easier. But when you take that same phrase and you add that C to it, you can forget about it. But, you know, for me, when I, it, it is different. Like when I try to sing every, every, my teacher always says, think of everything like Strauss, because when you sing Strauss, it is something that just the throat, the breath, the every, even all German music actually for me. But, um, you know, I, when I was learning some of the modern things, the bel canto technique, no, you, no, you can't, you can't really, it's not the same thing when you're singing English music, it's not really the same thing. And so I, I, I have suffered vocally sometimes with certain things, um, and trying to, 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 fit my voice into to, to to sell the piece right to sell these things and so like even when i sing porgy and bess it i it really takes me like three solid lessons to get my voice back into shape to sing toscas and to sing you know some of the other stuff and i, and I like singing tosca because again she has those big sweeping kind of soaring lines you know I've learned how to navigate, you know, putting my voice in a certain place to get to lock into those C's and lock into those B's and being low in my breath with some of those bigger phrases and everything. And I've learned and I've learned how to at least sing act three in tune because when I first started doing it, act three was so sharp. And that's my that's my it's Achilles. So high. 
after so, act one and two, it's like, oh, yes, and like being yeah. And by, and by the time you get to that, you're like, wait, I sang act two. Peace out, people. Like, <laughs> I have earned my way. Listen, ladies, I love act three, and I only I sing it like Mozart. I'm the only way to do it. <laughs> It's true. And again, I learned that I had to, I figured out the third time I did it. Okay. This is what I need to do and what I need to do between act two and, and three, you know, to adjust, but yeah, going and singing Porgy and Bess or singing like fire or singing, um, uh, champion, which was written for Denise Graves. Right. Like that right. role was written for Denise, but it's a little bit higher. It's higher in her registration and it's a little lower in parts in mine, mm -hmm. but I have a kind of voice that has like a nice juicy middle. And so I can kind of get away with doing some things, but you know, I, I always say you guys, you just got to get in there and figure out how it works, works for you. And it does, it's all different. It really is all different. Everybody is, everybody's voice is different. And I hate that they always try to put people in a box. I mean, Carrie is a great example of that. Carrie started as mezzo, moved up to soprano, but still can sing a lot of those Fischenbach roles too, the ones that are kind of, that are in the cracks. And, you know, people can't always think outside of that box that, wait, Carrie can sing Tosca, but she can also sing Jane Seymour. Mm. really well, Ooh. you know? And they yes. people get confused. They get confused and then they're like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't really know what to do with her. I mean, I, do you want to know how many times I've heard that? And I'm just like, "What? well, here, let me spell it out for you. So but for I, young singers too, we need to tell them this, that you don't have to fit in the box. You know, pick and choose the roles. Just because they say, oh, you're a lyric soprano, you should sing this list. Sometimes there's just a role that you don't relate to it doesn't sit well in the voice, like you're, you were saying, Karen, a Strauss, fabulous, great. But there's probably a few Strauss that don't sit well in the voice too, exactly. right? Exactly. And there's a few Verity that I just don't like, you know? And <laughs> Carrie, I'm sure there's a few Mozart that you're like, eh. Oh, hail to the no. Like, I mean, no. There, I mean, and there's some that I don't want to sing because of the character. Like, I, do you want to, want to know how many times I've been asked to sing Donna Anna? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Fiordaligi, oh, oh, Dorabella is so way more interesting than Fiordaligi. I actually, I love the arias, but the ensembles were like my larynx was in my eyeballs. Like, why, right. why, why would I do this to myself? The young singers, you know, the ones that are listening, all three of us are like, hey, pick and choose, and tell, let, let people tell your manager, this is what I want to sing. This is what feels good. This is what I relate to, and the rest of them. Yeah, exactly. And you know, all, oftentimes it is about, it's what I'm finding over time, the more you know, the more you know about everything, the more you know about your voice, the more you know about the kind of artist that you are and that you would hope to become, because sometimes it doesn't always, you know, work out that way. The more you know about this art form, Mm -hmm. um not the not necessarily just the business but the art form you know knowing the history knowing your histrionics is so important oh, you know yeah. not just to being able to have conversations but to be able to understand why the composers were writing certain things to whom they were writing them awesome. for and then equating them with your own instrument and your own soul in so many different ways i mean you must do that kind of work because so many people on the other side making those decisions they don't they push those people out they push those people out and you know that that knew that heard these great conductors you know and 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 singers in the theater you know and, and understood a voice and say okay they can do all of these different things you know I, i've always been told from day one you're confusing you're going to confuse a lot of people and you're going to be it's going to be difficult for all you three of us you know what you got three singers here and look at we're all having careers yep and we've all made our own paths Mm -hmm. and, and we've all had our own journeys. And you know what? All three of us, I'm sure, have had bumps in the road along the way. Um, some massive, <laughs> big ass potholes. Let me just tell you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, listen, when I, when I know, when I, when I, um, I, when I graduated from the Adler Fellowship, I was, the, the couple months before that, I was in the Met Finals. This was 2004, I was in the Met Finals. Okay. And I graduated from Adler in December 2004. 2004 and I was covering Louisa Miller at the Met 
um because the, what, what i didn't make the five was devastated i didn't win and so i went back to go audition for money and they invited me to do house audition that i you know and then i got the cover for louisa who in the heck thought i was ever going to sing louisa miller i i didn't even think of myself at all to be a, a, a verity in, in that in that way because that's a very different you know oh. but i could sing ernani i could sing all those things because i had all of those requirements mm -hmm. and i then i i was covering and i went and got a chance to go on and made my debut and then i thought oh okay is this what i'm gonna sing now is this the repertoire that I'm gonna sing and um the economy tanked <laughs> in 2008 that was 2006 2008 the economy tanked oh, and like I lost all my contracts and lost all these things and so I was sitting at home with my new husband and you know all these things trying to figure out what my life was like and I had to regroup and I had to learn I had to learn all this different rep and all of these different things and try to, to be able to do all these things with my voice because I knew when it opened back up, I didn't know what I was coming back to, you know? So I just kind of, you know, just to try everything to see if it was going to work because I don't think that that's, my voice didn't want to do that. It yeah. can do that. Like Trovatore is fine, but you know. Because it's why? Like, Soaring lines. That's Louisa it. Miller, that's a different animal. That, Ooh, that world is painful. <laughs> it is hard. Rosaria? Hell to the no. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what what needs to change in our business? Let's let's talk about that because I know that you have a lot to that's talk about. That's a huge, huge I know. That's like a two hour conversation. <laughs> okay, well let's just let's just do the, the, the cliff notes. Let's do the highlighted version. Can we say this though? Because I read a po I read a um I read a post the other day. And I wasn't sure what was going on because I kind of took, even though was, I'm putting crap on social media, I took myself off of social media because I just really was tired of reading everything. But of course I come across Russell Thomas because I love him. And, um, and there was some thread going on about what the hell have we been talking about for all these months and it's the same old shit. In, in, in conjunction with Sondra's question, how do we make these changes and have them stick Yes. When we're still getting this information from people that are in charge that they're not paying attention to us. They're not listening to what we're saying. It's not changing. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. And okay, we know that the opera houses are closed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get that. But right. th this is a perfect time for people to start working on change. Yeah. And it ain't happening. So talk to us. Well, it was, I think Russell's response was to my post about uh, a, a judging panel that I saw for a competition or it was either a judging panel or it, it was either a career panel talk or something. Oh, where that's they were like, mm -hmm, Where there were like seven white men on the panel and it triggered me. Yeah. And I, um, for, you know, the day before I'd seen the post, I seen the names and I was, and I was like, here we go, here we go. And then the next day, um, the one, and I, and I don't fault this person cause I know that they're a kind human, um, and always trying to do the right thing, posted the picture from their panel, the, you know, the zoom yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, triggered, and it triggered me. And I made the post to say, is this what we're doing after nine months of all of these conversations, all of these, listen, I am so traumatized over the last nine months of being called to step up and represent not only the black opera community, but also the opera community that I love. I love this art form. I love this. Um, I like this industry. I love this art form. I've given my life to to do this as a service. And you mean to tell me in December of 2020, somebody thought that was a good idea. And it was really a slap in the face and like, and, and really um, heartbreaking in a way because I'm like, oh, y'all just don't care. Oh, y'all just not paying it's attention. It's been lip service, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. To it's me, that was clear. And I was just extremely disappointed um, by that because all it takes is one. All it takes is one organization to take their foot off the gas and then everybody else will go, well, if they're doing it, then maybe, you know, I don't have to do it. And, you know, um, I, I had a talk with another uh, prominent black artist and he was saying, you know, that a, 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 pro a big company came to them and said, we're exhausted about all this race talk. Why do we have to keep talking about this? 
And, um, yeah, yeah. And so I go, okay, okay. And I know that the, that, that some of this work, a lot of this work is being done in the middle, you know, has been done, you know, some smaller companies, some mid-level companies have already been doing some of this work and, but they need the support of the top, you know, it comes from the top right. and not just them hiring who, or, or, or an enlisting the top singers because oftentimes they don't they're not many of us were not even equipped uh to, to to have the conversation we can just talk about our stories but i mean now on the other side when i have these conversations i'm so right. learned now because i've been doing it you right. know i've been in the rooms and been in the spaces but you know it's just the whole thing is just extremely unfair and i feel like there has to be some one company at the top leading the charge and in putting people it be that the metropolitan opera opera america like we all you know yeah. it's fine for the little guys to be doing it but if the big guys are like ah eh, we just gonna go back to business as usual or bigger co competitions or organizations i mean I'm, I'm interested to see what the tucker foundation is going to do on the other side because oh, they had a hard couple of months yes they did yes <laughs> they did I don't know where to go with all of this. Part of me feels like, well, maybe it's time to get on the boards, get the boards changed because money talks more than anything else. So, yeah. and I really love there. Were, I think, I don't know if it was LA. I can't remember where I heard this part of the conversation, but why would uh, someone black, Latina, whatever, somebody other than white want to be on a board when they're not seeing something that represents their community. And I thought, well, that's where we need to focus the change on is changing what we're producing so that people of all walks of life want to donate their money instead of the same white board. I don't know yeah. if I said that right, but that was kind of like, I, I hope you understood. Gary, no, you said it really well. No, yes, I mean, and I have a couple of points for what we were talking about. First of all, I, I am on the hire for COC. Because it happened at the same time we were doing our first module for Banff, it came up in the conversation with some of the younger singers about what does that mean? Because we have a very diverse group. Right. And what, even the white singers were like, well, what does that mean? Because again, these this next generation sees the whole world very differently, you right. know, and they understand the importance of, of diversity, of equity, you know, at, at every level. They get it. And so they're like, well, what does that mean? Well, I don't get to sing with people that I, you know, all, you know, and, and it behooves white singers to be able to sing with all kinds of singers, you know what right. I mean? All kinds of artists and make, you know, make art with a, with all the directors, you know, have you ever, have you guys, have you guys ever worked with directors of color? Yes. At all? Or black directors? I have over in Germany. In Germany. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, not oh, over here in North America. America. See, yep. I mean, like, that's just ridiculous. So, I mean, the, I, and, and, and when you speak to people, they want, they want to, they like, well, that would be cool to do opera, but we don't feel like they opera wants us. And I'm like, well, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say they do, because that's not the case. I mean, you opera know? is teetering, in my opinion, opera is teetering on becoming extinct. And, and I think it's because it is so archaic. And why do people not get this into their heads that if we don't bring opera to the present, it will not be anymore? No. Yeah. Well, the, the idea of that, why can't North American opera be representative of what North America is? Why does it have to be this kind of like shadow of Europe? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that that is where we need to step into the shoes of really being opera in, on this continent, being proud of what that means, right. telling the stories, making it reflective of the entire, um, you know, continent over here. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it should be. Not being embarrassed or ashamed of not being Europe, European. <laughs> I mean, listen, it started in Europe. You're not going to get around that. You're not going to get around ever not doing the traditional, the top 10 or 15. Fine. But it doesn't have to. But it doesn't have to be in the shadow. Uh, it can be in its fullness and its richness of who we are. You know, like that's the kind of opera I want to be a part of. Yeah. You know. I, and as far as the boards are concerned, listen, who wants to sit next to somebody who doesn't want them to be there when I'm giving my money? You know, that's also another thing. So we have to not only retrain our boards, but we have to go after different money. Yes. 
you know, and, and there is a lot of money in other communities. You know, listen, there's a lot of money in white communities that don't give any money to arts at all. Like we need to be going after wow. that money as well. Listen, I, when I lived in Kentucky, I did a poll of a polo event, Kentucky bourbon horses, right? right. That's it. And they, I, I sang the Star Spangled Banner or something like that, whatever. And, and they were like, oh, are you, an, you know, you're a singer. Yeah, I'm, I'm opera singer. Oh, are you? Oh, you know, that's wonderful. You live here? Yeah, I live in Lexington. Oh, I said, well, you guys do know you have a, a symphony, like quite a few small symphonies in Kentucky. You know, you have Louisville Symphony and Lexington Philharmonic and yeah. all this small Owensboro and all these. And you have a company in, in Louisville. Oh, these people don't even, they're not philanthropic to okay. the arts. And I'm thinking, I'm talking to this woman and I know she's just dripping of money. Like her whole outfit is just coins. And I'm like, oh, I love that. <laughs> you don't give to the, and I'm, I'm completely blown away. And she was like, well, tell me about this. You know, so I'm talking to her about giving money and supporting the opera, but their whole world is horses and bourbon and you know, that old slave money and like that whole, it's a whole different thing. Whole different. I'm like, wow. And that was just shocking to me. That was eye opening. I'm like, huh. But if that's I ran a company, she would, she would def, I would have her. Right. I would have her. Yeah. I mean, listen, Sandra, I've, I've followed your career. I've watched your career. I mean, we're not that further along in age, but to see you and your journey and to see you from a young, from a yap into like singing those trovers I mean I got to watch you you extend and I mean I wanted to be you too you know what I mean in a way in a way I mean I really you know so many of us have gotten to see your career in the front and the, from the front seat you know and to be and, and to admire you know and, and and I'm thankful that you all both invite and Carrie you know I mean I'm sure we've been up for the same some of the same things and you know our our we're in that in that generation you yeah. know of singers in that way, but like, you know, I, re I, I, um, to have watched you in your, you know, in your ascent and also to be able to sit here with you and, and to, and to see you, you know, do the show and to like know you in a, di in a different way. I mean, it's really important that the world knows that we are just not these costumed, pretty pictures. Buzz. Yes, exactly. In the grand old, old way, but that you can... <laughs> That we be on a show with your shoulder off. hanging out, and like <laughs> that we lick toothpaste off of our t-shirts. See, see, and we talk about sex toys. Thank you. And and menopause. Right. Menopause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. menopause. I mean, you are too young for that stuff, but yeah. No, but I mean, it's it's it is important. Like I did a talk, a, a talk with one of my friends who is um who has a a, a, a few African American young ladies that she mentors and she, privately, and I went to go speak to them, and so many of them have watched me, you know, and and seen me do things over the years, and when they got to talk to me like like a big sister, little sister. Yeah. It changed your whole perspective, and I'm like, yeah, you can be yourself too. You just have to be really, really, really good at your art. Yeah, you know, you gotta do the work. <laughs> well, I can't tell you how many people, you know, they've said, it, and it's it's the reason why I do what I do. Kids write me or kids come up to me and say, you know, I'm doing what I love now, music, because I saw you do blah blah blah, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And I mean, we all had somebody. You had Denise Graves. Carrie had somebody. You know, and I had somebody that made me get into this art form and it's such an honor to be that person that they looked up to and to be able for them to ask us and to have these conversations so that they know that you know we put our pants on the same way mm. you know one leg at a time and exactly and, that's, and that it is a struggle you know that it has been that hasn't been an easy road no and, and I think what's interesting, and it hasn't been an easy road, we all have had our own careers and our own past, and all those roads have their own pitfalls, trees fallen, potholes, whatever it is. And, and so you don't know that. Turns. Uh, what? <laughs> Turns, you turn. You don't know that until you actually start talking to that person and finding out. Because sometimes, you know, somebody could look at Sandra's career and her life and be like, oh my gosh, like you have it so easy. It's so blah, 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 blah. But what it took to get where she got is a very interesting story. Like I'm really looking forward to that book because I love biographies about singers and I hope I'm in Sandra's book. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. 
What, what shall that chapter be called, Carrie? <laughs> I don't know, like insanity? What? Shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> well, we should let, is there anything else you, you want to, to say to our viewers or do you, any other questions you all want to bring up? Because if not, we've got some rapid fire questions. Oh, oh, and now I mean, what, whatever, it, does, it doesn't matter. I mean, I just, you know, I always, I just want to say before we go into the rapid fire questions, like, I don't want people to think of, of this time um, as people just complaining and people, right. you know, uh, um, uh, yeah, it can always be this idea, but I think I, I think the respect for the injustices that have happened yeah, and yeah. the sacrifice that many of us have made during this time, you know, I think it needs to really, it really needs to not go unnoticed. And it's fine to say best of 2020 list and you make all these lists and you make, you know, and all of us who are create. I think that shout out to all of the content creators <laughs> that yeah. this was not your full-time job, that this Thank is not something you. that you shout out to you and you guys and Angel and um, Larry. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Kenny Overton who yeah. created, you know, all of us, you know, and, um, you know, TDO, you know, Dallas opera and all of the things oh, a shout God. out to all of the oh, artists God. who, who stepped into the moment. Right. And what, for whatever reasons you decided to do it, that's your business, but shout out because this is not easy, no. you know, shout out to everybody who took that courage, who, who took that leap of faith and courage and put their ass on the line for this art form to move us through and forward. Yeah. I think that there needs to be some kind of award <laughs> or something to those of us who put our asses on the line, our careers and all these things. Shout out to all the black artists who were called Thank you. To step up and speak yeah. and speak yeah. and speak and speak again, you know, like, you know, there, there, there needs to be acknowledgement for that of some sort in this industry, because we did a service. Absolutely. You and know, and so I just wanted to just say that, you know, that it's not just about complaining and talking about all these things like there are, these are real issues. Yep. yep. And that it's not just because of 2020 i mean in the in the sense of i don't want this and those sacrifices to be for not to be for nothing i want what those conversations that I, all of them to actually mean something and to actually see the change across the board moving forward i i want to see something new in two years i want to see something even newer in five something better in ten so does that mm -hmm. make sense that um that the world that russell's kid is going to grow up into is different because yes. everyone sacrificed I'm, I'm not really good with my words no, no no you don't want it all to get caught up in just 2020. we want this right. conversation to be its own standalone it's not part of the pandemic it is its own standalone issue and we want to continue that conversation going forward we want to continue to see those changes going forward not because of the pandemic but alongside the pandemic two separate issues not the same yeah i just i don't i don't want people to go back to what it was does that make sense and i that it was a that what am i trying to say that it wasn't it wasn't a waste. Like there was something that could have come out of what happened in 2020 that could change our business. And that these panels and these questions that you all have been asked, actually, it wasn't a waste of your time. Does that make sense? That it was, yeah. it actually inspired change, lasting change. That's, gosh, that's the word. There I'm you thinking. got it. Thanks. You got it out, Carrie. Finally, <laughs> see why we edit. <laughs> I think we need to have Screaming Divas Award. I think we need to create a Screaming Divas Award. Girl, I don't give a shit what Screaming Divas thinks. <laughs> oh, they do. They do. Listen, it all means something. It all means no. I mean, my intent is not to is not to to back up. My intent is to keep moving forward. I mean, my girlfriend, who's fabulous in the banking world, she's like, "You're tired. This is no time to be tired, Karen." <laughs> She's like, you got to keep going. You, you, you know, carry the torch forward, girl. Right. She's like, you, whatever you create, all the things that you're doing, you got, you're, you're, you're just gonna keep going. And I was like, okay, okay. I just have to figure out how to, you know, manage all these things and balance them out. But my intent is not to stop. My intent is to take this place and bring people with me. Like that's it. Like y'all stay stuck with me. Like I'm not going anywhere. I'm not gonna One stop. Day at a time. 
You know, that's what I keep telling myself. If you're tired today, well, then you go to sleep and you wake up again tomorrow and you start all over again. Start and all over again. This pandemic has taught me that, that you know what, even if today was a pretty sucky day, tomorrow you wake up and you have another chance at it and we keep going forward one day at a time. And don't look at the big, big picture. Look at just where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And we can change where we are right now. Right now. And that's what this pandemic, I think, has taught me the most is that we can make a difference one day at a time. You know? One day at a so. time, baby. Yeah. Rapid fire! Okay. Ding, 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 ding. All right. I hear that in my head. Rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. Rapid fire, fire. Oh, oh, rapid fire, fire, fire. Oh, I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry, Karen. You're going to be like, why did I say yes to doing this with these No. Things? Way too much. We've content. been talking about this for a while, Carrie, so no. I know. I'm so glad that it finally happened. Your schedule was insane, and then I, I don't know. Honestly, I'm just going to be the last month or that has just been really hard, like really hard to focus, really hard not to be depressed, really hard not to just like want to eat my house down and weigh 500 pounds. I mean, it has been, I noticed like, I love chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, yes. I had Tracy Cox on my show two weeks ago and maybe my my whole perspective has has changed about how i feel about certain things about about my body about myself you know about certain things you know she was i watched that i because i was curious about her and what she had to say and um and i it was something i wish i had heard 20 years ago 15 years ago that it was okay to be me at whatever weight i was it was okay and that if I wasn't enough for whoever was trying to hire me, then I'm enough for someone else. I'm enough for me. Does that make sense? Like it was, I just wish that I had heard that. And I, what I really hoped was in her journey and in her path forward that we all come along with her, that we all, the business supports this. Because I look back and I look at people like Marilyn Horn and Joan Sutherland and Pavarotti and all these things. And, 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 yeah. They, I mean, I don't think we would have them if they lived in our generation now trying to be singers. And that's what's the most heartbreaking thing to me is that I feel like we've missed out on some talent that could have changed the world because of age or because of whatever. So I I thank you for interviewing her. I really appreciated that conversation a lot. And I totally understand. I, I, yeah, I'm with you. Can we do rapid fire now? Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Kim, I want to talk to you forever. I don't know how we have not been friends in this business because I feel like you would have been besties. Like there's something about this, like there, about you. I just really well, love. So yeah, that's people like, that are very similar. You know, that's the problem in this business. You don't really cross paths. Like mm-hmm. Tosca, there's only one girl in it. I know. I know. You know? <laughs> True. You know, that's when I really got to know Latanya because we were sharing the role. And I am all, you know, because, you know, Sandra was so generous with me, with teaching me and telling me her journey with Tosca, that I've loved to pass that information on and my own experiences on with Tosca. And then Latani and I are in there and we're, you know, doing staging or whatever. And and I don't remember what she said, but I was like, I don't want to do that either. (laughs) And then it was just kind of like this open dialogue of, hey, I saw what you look like here. You look like that. And it was this awesome, wonderful soprano um like juju that we could help each other because i can't see what i'm soprano doing juju. soprano juju yeah. Girl, we all gotta help each other out man we do. i mean i all like right. the, yeah go ahead i want to know what's your best beauty tip because you always look on point <laughs> you do. uh fenty beauty anything Brianna makes <laughs> and now she has a skincare line that is fabulous oh really Oh my God, the skin, the skincare, the, yes, I love it. I put the more, the toning and the moisturizer and I'm like, wait a minute. Do we need an endorsement here? Uh, Rihanna, listen, I'm looking for a sponsor and I always wear Fenty. This is all Fenty, everything. Hello, Hello. we're going to hashtag that. Okay. Call me girl, call me. Okay, Sandra introduced me to the lip gloss because I was like, what? I'm like, what's that? What's that lip gloss that you have on? And she's like, let's go. And now I have the whole collection. And it yeah. tastes good. It smells good. Mm. <laughs> so good. I just now when, my mouth, I think. When, when we're not wearing masks. And and it wasn't $50. Like nope. Tom Ford's 
fifty dollar, like right. you know, come or NARS or something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, 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 um. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Who was the last celebrity that you freaked out about meeting? Oh gosh. Well. Okay. So let me try to think. Oh, I just did the thing with with uh, Liev Schreiber. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did the thing with him in um, the summertime, uh, the Egmont, uh -huh. and I didn't freak out until afterwards because I didn't really know who he was. And my friend was like, girl, <laughs> you don't know who Ray, Don, Ray, Donovan? Ray Donovan? Yes. And I was like, um, and then I went to Google him and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like hanging out with him and we're just like shooting this shit, just talking and on the set and he's a narrator for, right. for Beethoven for right. peace. And, and he, and I knew he was like famous. Like I knew he was a star, but I didn't, it didn't come. So, and not until after we had done the thing, I completely freaked out. I even invited him to come on convos and he said, yes, still not even knowing that he was like as famous as he is. And then my girlfriend was like, okay, he was wiping your face. And I'm like, yeah, she's like, you need to Google him. And then I'm like, oh, holy shit. She shouldn't shit. have done that. She so shouldn't now. have done that. Cause then you're like. Um, and, he said, and he said, yes. So oh, I, I look. Okay, good. Okay. He's gonna come on. He's, well, he's in Venice right now or Italy right now doing a movie. But I, he, I'm, I, you know, I'm like, um, Instagram, Instagram, I'm following you. So the, the minute you land on this, the shores, I'm going to give you a couple days and then we're going to talk. So anyway, so like he was kind of like the first, you know, Fangirl. and I'm, I'm a Virgo. I'm so cool. Like when I meet people, I'm like, oh, okay. Hey, like it just takes me a little bit of time and then I freak out. Okay. Um, I'm going to make sure that in my account, when I see you post, that's coming, I'm going to put it in my calendar. And I'm gonna get on there live, and I'm gonna start no. some some, some yeah. shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> I think we're gonna so have to cool. do it together. He's so right. cool. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's a fashion trend that you never understood? <clears throat> Bell bottoms. Bingo. Yeah. Don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm sorry. It, I, doesn't, it does not work with thick, juicy thighs. It doesn't no, it, work. Uh, no. It does. And high waist. High waist. Like I'm. Just stop it. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Well, yeah. I like my thick, juicy thighs. Sorry, they're kind of hot. Oh, no. Thing. Thick, juicy thighs work. Bell bottoms? Shut up, Sandra. You do not have thick, juicy thighs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or, or, or the, 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 low, the low pants, like I get it. Or the really, really tight jeans that the, that the, got the young generation, the millennials, the Gen Z, whatever they are now. Yeah, um, know. They wear the really tight fitted jeans and they're low. I'm like, but they don't fit. Like they're too small they're too small they're too small i mean wrong i don't want to see your underwear just i don't, don't. Just don't and then they're so skinny because they, the, uh, the whole thing is too small so and honestly yeah. like there is something to be said about um being surprised like i don't really need to see everything <laughs> The element of surprise. That's what my grandmother always said to me. She's like, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting and let the element of surprise be there. <laughs> please, please. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, what awesome. profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Like outside of the music industry? Outside? Well, I, well I, a veterinarian is what I would have wanted oh, to do. Fun. But um, I think a, um, <laughs> a therapist probably. I would I would want to be a a, ther a therapist a, um yeah mm -hmm. I think you don't think you'd be too empathetic and like take that home and then like just want to eat cake and drink wine <laughs> probably <laughs> but again I love to hear people's stories so I'd yeah. be like mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but not but I also have such a big heart I always call myself Switzerland amongst my friends I'm always the middle I'm I always I am gray area I, I'm, I don't like to fight with anybody like I'm like let's work it out let's conflict you know yeah, so it's work, yeah I'm, I'm definitely Switzerland in most of my um my relationships you know favorite word <laughs> my favorite word uh oh my favorite word is probably glorious glorious that's so glorious i you know i love i love that word it's so beautiful okay worst gift your husband has ever given you <laughs> 
Um, probably a piece. This this. Oh my god, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. My first wedding ring. Oh, <laughs> I oh, hated it. Did you I know? hated it. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not sure. wearing it anymore. And after we got married, I was like, this thing is going. <laughs> Did you change it? I sure did. Okay, good for you. Good for you. I married that man, and I said, "This is this is this thing, right? It's oh, it's gone." <laughs> I love but it he doesn't more. he doesn't do social media, so it won't be a problem. Okay. Yeah. What's a song that gets stuck in your head a lot? Mm. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, "It's better than yours." <laughs> I love milkshake. That was my yeah. my ringtone. When you hear the beat, bum bugga bum bugga. I mean, it's on after that. You know. The, yeah, the you're right. Drops. You're right. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um, Very favorite good. cuss word. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. There's. You know what? There's just no way around that one. No. I know Nicole Heaston and I are always dropping f bombs for the conversation. <laughs> Okay. So bad. That girl, I, uh, Sandra, you don't know this. We need to get her on Screaming Divas too because that girl is hilarious. Her robe, purple robe series. Yes. I Nicole didn't hear this. Who was this? Nicole Heaston. Oh, I know Nicole. Her, her Black Santa collection and the whole um, like Christmas thing that she did. I about peed my pants. I don't know this woman, but I love her. <laughs> I know Nicole. I yes. Know. Nicole is not only a glorious singer, she is yeah. hilarious. Oh, Listen, okay. we need to do a um, opera singer um, show kind of it's thing. A round table we want to do. We need to. Everybody, everybody who's out here doing content, we need to do. And I was going to do that for New Year's, but I just don't, I don't have the bandwidth to like to do New Year's Eve like that just yet. But in the 2021, we need to do that. And we need to do it like so that the world knows that opera singers are really out here doing the thing you know i love that, I yep. love that idea we need to have okay we're talking Let's about that Karen. we're gonna make a plan Let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay last question mm -hmm. we ready carrie are we ready for last one so i have one more okay you do it what's the worst habit you have that you'll never break <sighs> the the carrie worst lifts her glass oh my <laughs> Yeah, my husband says I drink too much wine, but the worst habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably probably the wine. The wine. Or trash TV. <laughs> Listen, I am all about the housewives. I know I. Yeah, I and I don't really like. I pay attention, but not really pay attention. But like, I love it. I I I love it. I love reality TV. It's horrible. It's awful it doesn't do anything for society right but makes you I feel better doesn't it it makes you feel like you're not such a bad person <laughs> exactly i'm like at least i'm at least i'm bringing beauty into the world uh you know helping people you know making people feel better when they leave <laughs> bingo the space Last question? oh my god that's hysterical yes girl, girl go ahead if heaven exists what do you want god to say as you enter the pearly gates you did you did the thing girl you did it you did yes, it yes you did yeah yeah you did the thing girl and yeah and you did it well and you did it well here's your mama you know i would love to see Aww. my mama i don't carry out i think knew that my mom passed away when i was about 18 or 19 yeah. from breast cancer so it's been a long time but i would love to see me her. too i lost my dad when i was 17. oh wow so yeah yeah. Tough times, isn't it? But yeah, it changes you. Now, I had a breakdown the other day, and I very, very rarely do. You know, as as many people know, when you lose people, you know, as time goes on, you are not aware of the last time you had a breakdown or an ex, you know, whatever. Just the time just goes, and sometime it hits you, and it'll be twenty five years this New Year's Eve that I lost my mom. And mm -hmm. so the other day, I think I was just having this breakdown and I was just like, I would, I really, sometimes I go back where, where I'm angry and, or I feel regret, mm -hmm. I feel, I feel hurt because I'm like, I wish I had my mom to like, just call and, you know, and I have my dad and my dad's there, but your mom is different, you know? And as a woman, as I'm growing into 
myself, I'm understanding that that women, that feminine, that that thing that God gave us with, you know, only we have and we need it. And I've always been very resistant to older women. And I think it's because I've lost lost my mom. And I've always been very much like if you're not my aunt or my friend in a way, like I've been very resistant of that kind of energy, you know, in my life. And so um but you you need that. Like we need that. We need our mamas. You do. Our mamas shape who we are as women. I really, truly believe that. Absolutely. And then my friends remind me, you got everything you needed to, to got everything. She gave you everything that you needed to, to move on and, and be right. successful and to be a good woman, a good person and all those things. And so I do feel that as I come into my, my, my maturity, I feel, I feel like I'm starting now things are starting to I, uh, ma- I, all the things that have been marinating are now coming into the flavor, right? You know, right. like I'm being able to have conversations, being able to speak about things, being able to um, express myself and, and come and being comfortable with my opinions yeah. and knowing, you know, I think that all comes from, and I know she gave those things to me and now they are blooming as I'm turning 40, as I'm 45 and I'm blooming into the woman that I am. And so, yeah, it's, it's bittersweet, but I, I'm I'm blessed. I'm very, very blessed, you know. We all are, you know. I yeah. think all three of us have different blessings, but I think we all are very grateful for them, you know. And I think maybe that's why we're doing our shows is because we want to give back for all that we've been given. Oh, yes. And I think we're all three very grateful in different ways. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being with us today, honestly. Thank you for having me. I, you. I know. And we got to do our round table, our, our, our opera yeah. round table for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I kept thinking about uh, women's women, just women. I want, I want women's voices. Diva round table. Yeah. I just think there's something about women in this business. And I love that I'm seeing more women, you know, in these positions of power because it, it really, it needs to happen. So I love that. Absolutely. And younger women, you know, yeah. having, encouraging them, pushing them and, and they supporting them yeah. in a way, because, you know, of course, the women of a generation before us, they, they had it, it was different. It was different, yeah, you know, for them to step into there. So sometimes they're not always as welcoming, open and supportive the way that they should be. Yeah. So we have to, yep. you know, All of them standing yeah. behind us. We have to let them find their voice and we have to help them, help them facilitate yeah. them finding that voice. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. our job. It's our duty. I think so. I agree. Mwah. Mwah. Hugs. Happy you. holidays. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yes. And, and, and we'll may 2021 bring you peace, mm-hmm. calmness, job. and jobs. God. Yes, come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for those, you know, things to happen. <laughs> Thank you for everything and I'll be in touch with you for sure. All right. Okay. All right. Bye you guys. Bye. <laughs>